Kenya would lead the international response to Haiti's urgent call for support in restoring safety and security for the Haitian people. I urged then the UN General Assembly to establish a framework to enable this vital mission to be undertaken. On 2nd of October last year, that framework was realized when the, United, when the Security Council authorized the deployment of the multinational security support mission to Haiti. Kenya immediately answered this call. On 24th June this year, I had the honor of flagging of the first contingent of Kenyan officers followed by a second deployment shortly thereafter, bringing the current total deployment to nearly 400 security officers. Already, this mission is showing positive results, restoring hope, and providing a glimpse of stability that lies ahead. Our meeting today marks a significant step as we reaffirm our commitment to peace, progress, and partnership. I am pleased to announce that an additional 600 Kenyan police officers are completing their pre-deployment training and will be ready for duty next month. Our officers are working closely with the Haitian National Police to restore order, protect critical infrastructure, and create safe spaces where Haitians can thrive. In collaboration, they have already recaptured key sites, the General Hospital, the National uh, um, Palace, and other critical infrastructure. This process stands stuck in contrast to the uncertainty that once prevailed around any meaningful deployment in Haiti. I commend the demonstrated professionalism of the MSS and urge them to remain steadfast in discharging their responsibilities. The conduct of MSS is a testament to the integrity of Kenya's security deployment within the country and around the world, which I am certain is one of the reasons Kenya was yesterday elected to serve at the UN Human Rights Council for the period 2025 to, 2020, to 2027. When I visited the multinational security support mission in Port-au-Prince on September 21st this year, the commander and his Haitian counterpart spoke of the positive momentum that has weakened the stronghold of gangs over the country and generated of optimism for better days ahead in Haiti. Today, with Prime Minister, we discussed ways to sustain and build on this momentum, and this is the battle that we can win if our friends stand resolute in solidarity with Haiti. The conversation I've had this morning with Prime Minister Cornell paints a brighter future because between me and him and our security people, we believe the situation in Haiti is winnable. And we are asking the international community to match their commitment, their pledges, with the necessary action for us to be able to complete the task ahead of us. Kenya and Haiti, therefore, stand united in calling on the international community to urgently rally behind this mission. And the operation word here is urgently. We have a window of success that is evident from the operations that have been carried out already. And without wasting time, when resources are made available, 
there will be demonstrable progress on securing critical infrastructure, critical spaces for people to return to their homes. I must congratulate the President of El Salvador, who a few days ago signed into this um, program and is providing critical support. I will be speaking to him later for us to build a bigger collaboration with Bahamas, CARICOM, Canada, and of course the U.S. in driving this multinational security support mission towards the intended mission that we all set out to achieve. The adoption by the UN Security Council of Resolution 2751 on 30th September 2024, extending the term of the multinational security support mission by another one year, signals strong global support. But however, words and pledges must be merged by concrete action. We therefore strongly implore our global partners to accelerate their contribution to the personnel, logistics, and financial resources necessary to sustain, expand, and complete this mission. Beyond security, we have also identified areas for collaboration in trade, tourism, cultural exchange, and to achieve lasting change, we must invest in economic growth and social connectivity. This is why Prime Minister Cornell and I discussed concrete steps to enhance trade and boost investment between our two nations. We envision a future where Kenya and Haiti, as well as the larger Caribbean region, are linked not only by shared values of democracy and rule of law, but also by dynamic economic exchanges to create jobs, spur innovation, and uplift communities. As we work together, we reaffirm our commitment to multilateralism as a powerful force for good. However, we recognize that global governance structures must evolve to reflect today's realities, our shared challenges from climate change to food security, demand institutions that are resilient, responsive, and equitable. Kenya and Haiti believe in the need for reform that realigns our institutions to serve the needs of all nations, ensuring a more just and sustainable world. In this spirit, we also champion the strengthening of ties between the Africa Union and the Caribbean community, regarded as the sixth region of Africa. By forging these alliances, we seek to enhance South-South cooperation and build a more interconnected, prosperous, and resilient uh, global community. In closing, Mr. Prime Minister, I extend my gratitude to you for your visit and for the spirit of collaboration that has characterized our discussions today. Haiti is a great inspiration to Africa. You became the first black republic in 1st January 1804. That's just more than 210 years ago. And because you inspired many countries with your own struggle for independence, believe in the rule of law, believe in freedom and democracy, many African countries followed in Haiti's footsteps. And today we have a free Africa that has the potential to work with Haiti, even in this mission. There are many African countries, um, Your Excellency, who are ready and willing to participate in this mission because of the shared history of rule of law, freedom, and democracy that we all share. We look forward to continuing this dialogue, strengthening our ties, and building a future of peace, progress, and prosperity for our nation. As you journey back home, my brother, kindly convey our best wishes to the President, Mr. Voltaire, 
and esteemed members of the Transitional Presidential Council and to our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Thank you very much. Please welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me first start by thanking you for hosting us. It feels so nice to be back in Nairobi, a country, a city that I consider almost a second home, having been here so many times before. But let me also thank you for your vision, for your leadership, and for your commitment. You know, it's important to remind that Haiti is a country of 12 million people hostage to a handful of gang members with half a population food insecure, with 600,000 displaced, with 70% of the health infrastructure that health had collapsed. And this crisis came at a time when the world has its share of crisis. And you helped us tell the world that Haitian children are not less deserving than the others, and that Haitian men and women who are suffering deserve solidarity, and you led that fight with us. And today I think we're in a better place. You help where others saw crisis, you saw opportunity and potential, and you voiced it in a very firm way, allowing for others to come together around Haiti. And me and the Haitian people are extremely grateful to you for your leadership in this critical time. I also want to, of course, extend and convey uh, the gratitude of the Haitian people to the Kenyan people for their commitment, engagement, and sacrifice. Today, you share with us not because you have extreme abundance, but because Kenyan people have made the determination that Haiti deserves their help and support, and they've stepped up in a very significant way. Let me also reiterate what you've said. The first deployments of Kenyan contingents in Haiti have been extremely helpful, useful, professional, committed. Um, they've engaged almost immediately side by side with, their, with the police force. They've provided us with the wealth of experience that they have and they continue to engage with us in a significant manner. Early on in this process you will recall that their doubters had thought that language would be a barrier. Let me um, confirm that it has not. I followed directly operations in some of the most difficult circumstances and uh, they found ways to make sure that they protect each other and they get the mission accomplished. You said and we agree that this is something that we can do. If we work together, we are confident that we can see significant progress in the security situation in Haiti and as you have pointed out, begin the rebuilding process and we're committed to doing so. Uh, now obviously our partners will have to step up and meet the commitments they've made and the time is now. There is a sense of urgency. The progress that we're seeing is contingent on us continuing to provide the Haitian people with the relief that is desperately needed and of course that will only happen if the many commitments that were made by the international community actually materialize. So I'm also here to make a plea to our friends from other countries to come back uh, to the commitments they've made and to ensure that as urgently as possible they're able to make sure that the mission is fully funded, they're able to make sure that the police force and uh, the contingent from Kenya have the resources they need to be able to be fully operational and that already we're looking at the consolidation and the early recovery and the investments that are necessary to rebuild the schools, the health institutions that will sustain whatever progress uh, we made. I can quote here the uh, um, commander of the Kenyan troops in Haiti with which I have regular meetings when he tells me, Prime Minister, this is winnable, this mm -hmm. is winnable. And that, of course, has inspired us all. In the next few days and weeks, we will continue to build on this progress. We've established uh, an electoral council that will be installed. We've been able to reopen our schools. We're seeing progress in the security front as well. Obviously, the gangs are reorganizing to make it more difficult, but we're ready and we'll be steadfast. We're using our assets more effectively. We're looking at new relationships with others who may be willing to engage. We're going to see how we um, provide a more integrated approach solution which would include disarmament, which would include better communication, which will include um, um, all 
the integrated and well thought through interventions that are usually required to address these kinds of security situations, but obviously an effective repressive force will continue to be an essential component of that. And let me tell you that just last week we had this incredible um, violent event led by a gang in the northern part of, of, of Port-au-Prince and um, quickly um, the police and the contingent were able to deploy by road uh, within, within um, really virtually hours to make sure that um, the city in question was quickly protected and that we would have the appropriate level of response to make sure that we address the situation. So this is to say um, that the Haitian people now have hope in what can be achieved. It is, of course, a cautious optimism. They will expect us to do more, and they deserve more. They've suffered now for months. Um, hundreds of thousands still cannot go home. Uh, the infrastructure needs to be rebuilt very quickly. But they trust that the government and its partners are doing the right things. And of course, with the presence of the force, they can see, they can start to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And that, I think, we need to build on as quickly as possible. So again, thank you. Excellency, um, and please do convey through you our gratitude to the Kenyan people for that act of solidarity. And I can tell you that it will not be lost. Thank you very much. With your permission, we'll take a few questions. Members of the press, if we may start with your name the media house you represent. Now let's stick to one question so that we may open up for more. We'll start with Joy from Al Jazeera, then we'll follow suit. Joy from Al Jazeera. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister and Your Excellency President Ruto. Um, our question um, is in regards to the latest attack and what has been done to safeguard uh, the Kenyan officials who are assisting uh, in the mission. And question number two is, it's actually a, a, an opinion where I feel like the partners, international partners, have delayed the funds and there's fear that uh, the mission could be stalling. Is that correct to assume? I think I'll allow, okay, do we take another question? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Rose Buchanan from AFP. Um, so alongside the 600 further officers, um, will Kenya or members of the international community be supplying additional or improved equipment for the force already present in Haiti? Okay, we can take those ones first. Or, thank you very much. I think I will allow Prime Minister to respond to the first question because he has the latest information on um, uh, the attack. That, uh, and he, as you've heard him uh, speak to it, the response was the fastest that uh, could have been assembled in a long time. As we talk both the Haitian police were doing a wonderful job alongside our multinational security support mission of officers from Kenya already in that region. Um, I'm, I'm informed that it's a region two hours drive from uh, Port-au-Prince, a region that for a very long time has been held hostage by criminals and gangs but today we have a foothold and a footprint of both the Asian police and the Kenyan contingent in that place. Um, as to your question as to what is being done, I think everything is being done to make sure that we minimize casualties of both our security men and civilians, even as we deal with the, with the criminals. And on, um, the question from FP on what additional, additional is being done. Um, Prime Minister just came out of uh, uh, UAE who have committed uh, 
to support uh, this mission. El Salvador, as I told you on the third, which is just a week ago, also signed in uh, to provide capabilities for the support for the multinational security mission. Uh, there are other consultations that are going on. Additional equipment have been provided. Additional um, air support has been provided thanks to um, Prime Minister's uh, goodwill and uh, coordination. So there is a lot more that is happening. Yes, we can do more, and the partners need to step up. That is correct. We have commitments that have been made by our global partners, and it is my position alongside that of Prime Minister here that every partner should, this is the moment to step up, and this is the moment to provide that critical support for us to be able to undertake the exercise at hand. Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. I think you've covered it extremely well. A few days ago, a rootless gang murdered and assassinated over 70 people, including men, women, and children, northern part of Haiti, which was a senseless crime. And as I said, within hours, we were able to not only deploy, but this time we were able to deploy significant numbers by road, which we hadn't been able to do. But second, and even more important, we we're able to deploy and stay. So this is no longer a reactive temporary mission. It has become a mission to the end to make sure that we can actually uh, regain a level of safety that's acceptable in the region. Now there's still a lot going on, and, and I don't want to by any means uh, describe this as being done or easy, but the work is being done house by house, neighborhood by neighborhood, to ensure that these people, the people of the Atemanite region, can once and for all by, uh, find peace. And I think the President has rightly stated that every operation is well thought through with the Kenyan team on the ground and the police force to ensure the greatest amount of security for the troops that will engage in these different combats. Now, obviously, it, this always comes with a level of risk, but we're confident that we do everything we can every time uh, to make sure that we're protected. And as I think, um, as the President has mentioned, coming out of New York, we had very constructive meetings with several partners. We're seeing new engagements. The EU, for example, has doubled its commitment. We're seeing new partners come in and make new commitments. We're talking to uh, Brazil as well, Mexico as well. Uh, as was stated, um, Salvador has recently, on the 3rd of, of uh, October, recommitted. But you're right. We would like to see a quicker response. Uh, we would like to see more commitment. Uh, and we're going to continue uh, to push for it. Okay. We can take a bunch of three more questions, two more questions. Then after that, we can wind up to the questions. All right. My name is uh, Nick Modimba from uh, CGT in Africa, China Global Television Network. The first question is, uh, what's the situation with the motivation of the Kenyan police units in terms of their payments? Reports coming in from Haiti say they haven't been paid yet. And of course, they have families back at home, depending on them. And of course, they're looking forward for their uh, people to come back home. Uh, second question, redeployment training. What have the current officers learned in Haiti that are actually instilling the same uh, ideologies, survival tactics to the current ones yet to travel to Haiti? And also, which units are these that are actually joining the others in Haiti? Thank you. Your Excellencies, my name is uh, Melita Oletengues uh, for Citizen TV. Uh, my question is um, in regards to uh, President William Ruto uh, speaking about uh, asking the international community uh, to honor their pledges and march, march them with actions. Uh, perhaps is there a setback for uh, human resources, especially in the MSS, uh, when you're saying uh, that uh, uh, we are working leaner in terms of resources? Has there been a setback in terms of uh, remunerating the operatives on ground? Thank you. Your Excellency, my name is Nyaboga Kiage from Nation Media Group. Uh, my question is, uh, for the longest time, people in Haiti have been claiming that the Kenyan officers do not leave their camp. How true is that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
I think all those questions you've asked are interconnected in some way. There is information that I can provide to you on um, matter security, but to a certain extent, um, it will not, it's not necessary for us to tell you which units are participating in this uh, operation because those are security matters. But on the whole, we have a budget that takes us all the way to March next year. So in terms of being able to support our officers on the ground, including those who are joining next month, um, we have resources to make sure that um, they have every support that they need up to March 2025. We are asking the international community to step up because our mandate extends all the way uh, to October uh, next year. Um, all the other issues have been um, taken care of. As for the status of uh, the MSS security personnel and how they are operating, I think you've heard from the Prime Minister the kind of robust engagement that is going on with our um, security personnel. I do not think that uh, they would be in a camp and at the same time be in the operation area that the Prime Minister has just talked about. Maybe Prime Minister can. Really just to add that I personally have been on patrol uh, at one o'clock in the morning with our, our Kenyan brothers and sisters that are working with us. They've engaged in very delicate and difficult operations in the center of the city. They've helped us com commence to secure our port. They're involved in patrolling the university hospital in the administrative area. And more important, they're, up, they're with us up north, working closely with the police force to address the current threat with the gangs. And they do so with the level of professionalism and expertise that we've learned to trust and admire. So I can tell you safely that no, we are engaging. They also, the leadership is also very much engaged with the leadership of the police force in strategic thinking, in understanding, in collecting intelligence, and in finding out how to use it more effectively. So that exchange is also helping build up the capacity of the Haitian force itself. So let me be very clear. The presence of the two contingents that we have now have been extremely, extremely helpful in helping us make the progress that we are seeing now. Thank you very much. Um, just so that you know, we've had um, Prime Minister and I, we had different meetings in Washington at the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. I had engagement with uh, Secretary Blinken and um, they have also committed to provide more capabilities in terms of transport and other facilities that would help uh, us uh, move forward. I must commend Prime Minister that um, 10 days, 11 days ago, schools were opened in Haiti after a very long time. That's an act of courage, and uh, we intend to um, provide support and ask the international community to come along with us because there will be requirements for rebuilding some of the schools, rebuilding uh, some of the hospitals and other facilities for the people of Haiti to begin to regain normalcy in their lives and that additional support aside from the security um, personnel um, and, and the stability and peace that we are pursuing will be necessary to carry the community along with the social infrastructure that will help uh, stabilize uh, the country, create hope 